In this video, we will show you how to file a Distilled Spirits tax return. We protect all the confidential information you provide to us. First, go to the website cdtfa.ca.gov and at the top, click on Login. That will take you to the Online Services Login page. You must log in with a username and password. For assistance with creating a username and password, please watch our tutorials online. On the CDTFA Online Services Login page, we will enter our username and password. On the Online Services Profile page, under the Accounts tab, we will click on the Distilled Spirits Manufacturer Importer hyperlink. This will take us to the Distilled Manufacturer Importer account page. Under the Periods tab, click on the return period for which you would like to file. In our example, we will file for the third quarter 2019 period, which is displayed by its return end date of September 30, 2019. The return will begin with a list of questions to determine which reports, if any, should be completed with your return. In our example, we will select Yes to purchase or receive distilled spirits from other distilled spirits importer licensees in California and sell or deliver spirits to other distilled spirits licensees in California during this reporting period. A question will populate providing an option to manually enter the reports or upload an Excel workbook. We will select Manually and click Next. This will take us to the Distilled Spirits Purchased or Received from Other Licensees in California page. To get started, we will click on Add a Record. A box will populate and we must enter all the required fields in order to proceed. After entering all the information, we will click on Add. The information we just entered will populate on the table. We can verify the name of the common carrier and the associated gallons reported. To delete a record, we can click on the X. To make edits to this row, click on the pencil and pad icon. And to add an additional record, click on the Add a Record link. Once we have added all our imports, we will proceed by clicking Next. On the Distilled Spirits Exemption on Sale or Delivery to Other Licensees in California page, to add an entry, we will click on Add a Record. A box will populate, and we must enter all the required fields in order to proceed. Review the information populated on the table for accuracy and then click Next to proceed. On the Inventory Reconciliation 100 Proof and Under page, totals from the previously entered reports will pre-populate. Please note the total inventory at the beginning of the reporting period must be equal to the ending inventory from the previous reporting period. In our example, our ending inventory from the previous reporting period was 10,000 gallons, so our beginning inventory for this period is 10,000 gallons. The purchase of 15 gallons from distilled spirits purchased or received from other licensees in California and the 5,000 gallon returns from retailers brings our total accounted for inventory to 15,015 gallons. After the total sales of 15,015 gallons, our inventory at the end of the reporting period is zero gallons. We will review the page for accuracy by verifying that the total accounted for fields match. If everything is correct, we will click Next to proceed. On the Inventory Reconciliation Over 100 Proof page, the totals from the previously entered reports will pre-populate. Please note the total inventory at the beginning of the reporting period must be equal to the ending inventory from the previous reporting period. In our example, our ending inventory from the previous reporting period was zero gallons, so our beginning inventory for this period is zero gallons. The purchase of 15 gallons from distilled spirits purchased or received from other licensees in California brings our total accounted for inventory to 15 gallons. After the total sales of 15 gallons, our inventory at the end of the reporting period is zero gallons. We will review the page for accuracy by verifying that the total accounted for fields match. If everything is correct, we will click Next to proceed. On the Transactions 100 Proof and Under page, 
the transactions will pre-populate based upon the information entered on the previous pages. Review the page and enter any applicable exemptions. If you need to update information, click Previous. In our example, we did not have any other exemptions and we'll click Next to proceed. On the Transactions Over 100 Proof page, the transactions will pre-populate based upon the information entered on the previous pages. Review the page and enter any applicable exemptions. If you need to update information, click Previous. In our example, we did not have any other exemptions and we'll click Next. Please review and make sure everything is correct. If you need to make an adjustment, click Previous. To print a draft of your return prior to submission, click on the Save Draft button below. If the information displayed on the page is correct, click Next. Enter your required information and click Submit. When you click Submit, a window will appear to confirm your intent to file electronically and that your return is true, correct, and complete. Please read the information carefully. Enter your password and click OK to submit. This will serve as your authorization and confirmation. You will not receive a confirmation email. This confirmation page represents a return filing only. Please take note of your confirmation number and the total amount due. We recommend that you print this page for future reference. To make an electronic payment, click on the Make a Payment button. To print your submitted return, click on the Print Return button. If you still have questions, please call our Customer Service Center at 1-800-400-7115, California Relay Service at 711.